Hey guys, Energy Ethos here, or rather just Ethos today and every day after. Because if you hadn't heard, as of today, I'm officially released from NRG. And this video is about why I regret joining NRG. I joined NRG in early 2021 as a content creator when I was known mainly for my highlight videos and as one of the first to main Yoru. Since then, NRG has been instrumental in making my dream of playing Valorant for a living a reality. Throughout my three and a half years at NRG, they have been unwavering in their support for me and my career. Now, I know many of you criticize NRG for involving me in cringe content, such as the TikToks, that, you know, don't usually align with my brand, but I never felt forced to do anything. And even if some of the content was cringe, I honestly found it pretty amusing. It's important to note though that those TikTok ideas were not ours, but were directed by the content team at the time. And they were just trying to do their job to fulfill deliverables. And they mainly just followed whatever TikTok trends they saw on their For You page. Anyways, through NRG, I was able to move to LA, meet many incredible people in the industry, and establish a solid presence in the scene. I never imagined myself being a part of another organization because the people at NRG truly became family to me. Now onto the real stuff. One of the biggest regrets I have within NRG is joining their roster last year as the sixth man. Before last season began, I was initially asked to become the original sixth man. I was hesitant and even said no at first because I was still focused on competing in the VCT qualifiers. At the time, I felt closer than ever to my goals as a player and a competitor and didn't want to inhibit that progress. Unfortunately, as has always happened in the past, my team fell short of reaching our goals despite me feeling like I was reaching new peaks as a player and our VCT season ended there. After lock in Brazil last year, the rosters reopened and I was given another chance to become the sixth man. Since the qualifiers were now over, my main reason for saying no had diminished. Knowing this opportunity wouldn't come again, I eagerly accepted. I was happy to work with Chet as he was already my friend and saw it as a new chance to learn from some of the best in the game. Hey guys. I'm Energy Ethos, and I am Energy's newest Valorant six man. Franchise player, by the way. Yep. Deserved. Uh, being well known and introducing you, we're friends, so I'm very excited to have you in here. Shit. I have like $4 in earnings. I'm always in the top section. <laughs> if I don't get grouped, it's a good day. It's a good day if I don't get grouped. <laughs> My peak team ranking was 47 in just West Coast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've, been, I've been competing uh, on and off for the last two years since the game came out. Uh, I did take a little bit of a break to focus full-time streaming, but competing's always been a passion of mine. Uh, I've played with quite a few people uh, in the past, and you know, I, I've seen you know, how they mold themselves into top players, and I've always kind of thought that you know, I could do something like that too. After becoming the sixth man, I immediately clicked with the members on the team. They accepted me into the system despite me being a substitute player with no prior tier 1 experience. I am truly grateful to each and every person on the team for being so open. I quickly spent the first few practices on orientation and calibrating where my place was on the team, trying to figure out different ways I can contribute from outside the server and how I could best spend my time to increase our chances. I felt like if I could increase our chances by even 1%, all the effort was well worth it. I showed up to every practice, wrote down notes on almost every round, all the rounds we did well and figuring out why we did well so we can replicate it. Most importantly, rounds that I felt like we could improve on and depicting how, using what methods, and determining what other options we had in those situations we could explore. Watching back each round of scrims multiple times trying to identify that. I was still new to analyst work outside being a player, so this process was a lot harder for me to get used to. Thankfully, with the help of Chet and the player's feedback, I felt I got much better at analysis work over time. I also spent a lot of time theorycrafting my own ideas on setups and plays as well as watching other teams' match VODs, trying to learn about their own unique systems and protocols to see if we we can implement anything from them to help our own play and also see if there were any weaknesses we could abuse if we ever had to face them in an official match. Of course, all this happened more as an assistive helping tool to the coach and the team than anything if they wanted it, but they were always incredibly receptive and open to my feedback. So to anyone on the outside looking in, yapping about their ego, they have no idea how remarkably humble these guys can be when it comes to trying to improve. Working on both micro for the team and macro for analysis outside
outside competition i felt like this season i had actually learned so much from the team the coach and also the environment of being in the franchise it was actually an incredible experience feeling myself level up in game intellect without even having to touch the game and again i'm truly thankful for the team and energy for facilitating that despite all the memes and the jokes on twitter i truly did feel like i was a member of the team and i was growing with them my goals for after the season as a sixth man was to take everything i absorbed and retain from the team and apply it into my own play in the server moving into the next season despite a disappointing end to our season in champs last year i still felt like i finally gained the last bit of experience i needed to reach the next rung of the ladder in valorant esports that was until i was faced with the horrifying state of esports in the 2023 2024 season despite feeling better than ever as a player the opportunities for re-entering professional play as a starter just wasn't there every team suffered major pay cuts and there was an overwhelming supply of amazing free agent players with a scarce demand for them in opportunities less than half the teams and challengers were on paired opportunities and even in tier one many teams and players were playing off of incredibly underwhelming salaries with almost zero job security with the new way rosters work this year but hey look at me now i actually have zero job security so the risk for pursuing esports this year had never been higher with a much lower reward so much so that even if i were to somehow land a spot on a top challengers team or a bottom franchise team i would still be making less than i would just focusing on content and i wouldn't even have the financial security to comfortably focus on it living in la is definitely not easy to do this was when i realized that i would have to be insane to still pursue esports in this world hoping for a lucky break when there's so many other amazing players also doing the same thing so many incredibly talented players i know from both tier 2 and tier 1 have already retired or entered into collegiate your programs because of this environment and it truly is a heartbreaking thing to see what valorant esports has become compared to 2021 when there were over 25 orgs and plenty of new rising star players constantly taking the world by storm given opportunities to really show what they are capable of this is also by no means riot's fault franchising is no doubt tough on those aspiring to climb the ladder but i understand why it was their best option to at least cement the longevity of valorant esports at the very top by using this to build storylines and proper fan bases. Franchising is made for long-term success of the teams at the top, not for short-term potency of the teams that haven't made it there yet. So despite my love for competing and organized Valorant, I had to make the very difficult decision to let go of competing, retiring from even wanting to try to make things happen. I always dreamed about standing on stage and playing with and against some of the best the world has to offer. It's just not feasible anymore in my position. I don't blame Riot, Energy, or the team at all for this outcome. And I know that this is just the way the world is with the overall current state of esports sports going on the decline not just in valorant as lockdown eased up and people started to go out again new games and the esports entertainment space as a whole has begun to slow down and these are just some of the byproducts of that had i been given the foresight to predict all of this happening this year i would have most definitely not spent all that time focusing on the team i really neglected my responsibilities and my role as a content creator put everything i had into being on that team and it definitely was not the right move considering now i have to grind my way back up to make even content a livable profession but all things considered do i actually regret my time as a sixth man for nrg the honest answer is actually no i couldn't have had that foresight all this is said in hindsight it definitely wasn't a smart career choice looking back now but i was able to live through some invaluable experiences and build some amazing bonds with the people on the team last year even though i was a sixth man and it was only for one season i got to feel what it's like to stand next to them on that stage as a member of the team and see what it's like from the very top of the game it was an experience that very few people will ever get to see and i am so grateful to everyone at nrg the team and at riot for making that happen as a person who was never quite able to make that step into the top i am truly thankful to everyone for letting this little yoru content creator live out his dream even if it were only for a moment so fast forward to now the market has continued to decline with majority of orgs releasing most of their streamers and opting for just signing mainly co-streamers to watch part of their games two days ago management gave me a call to let me know that i was being released from my contract the decision was definitely unexpected but i can't say i was necessarily surprised either it honestly just didn't make sense keeping us on since the tiktoks we were doing every week were definitely not high quality and most definitely not making good returns on their investment i was personally still being paid well above market rate as a creator and I wasn't stuck wondering, trying to figure out why they came to this conclusion. Also, it's probably most definitely because of FNS and Psalm, but that's another story. Fuck those guys. So to NRG and everyone behind the decision to let me go, I just want to say that I understand. The content we were doing wasn't doing well. Honestly, for a while, I started to lose my passion for filming those 
cringe content pieces and i don't think anyone's to blame for that the scene is tough right now for budget and content is stale within valorant and gaming as a whole so it's difficult being able to churn out exciting pieces that make a good return on the investment my numbers are personally at an all-time low as are most streamers still in the scene so it completely makes sense to me from a business standpoint why us being signed was no longer logical all of my friends and fans may be upset about this decision maybe even more so than i am considering i felt like i had done a lot for energy over the course of the last three and a half years and for it to end so abruptly is a little sad but energy has also done a lot for me and i can't express my gratitude enough to my friends over there of course i wish things had ended differently but there's no point harboring resentment when it simply cannot outweigh all the positive experiences i've had with so please do not send any hate to nrg or any of the other people affected by this decision because everyone is just trying to survive out here especially me i stream all the time at twitch.tv slash ethos by the way so please let me play some ads for you moving forward now that i am at the bottom i don't plan to stay here i truly am thankful for everyone who has stuck around through this dry period of my career and i've actually really enjoyed being able to spend some more quality time with my community now that it's smaller and I actually get to know them as well as letting them get to know me Moving forward, I want to stay in gaming content, but maybe not just highlights. Having been at both the top of Valorant content and now at the bottom, I realize how much more fulfilling it is to incorporate more of my personality into my brand versus just being known for insane, you know, best in the world highlights. I want to create content that allows the viewers to connect to me more as a person, whether that's through storytelling like this or different niches of Valorant content as a whole. I want to be someone that you can enjoy for me and not just for my gameplay even though the gameplay is pretty sick you guys should tune in thank you guys all for sticking around and i hope to be able to provide you all with better content in the future so make sure to keep an eye out as i try to rebuild on a different path thanks so much for watching